Let's talk big spaces, little yeah. spaces. Yeah. Go a bit more mechanical. In that, I think you did 14, 12, 16 shows in Stratford. Mm -hmm. Big space. You come to Tarragon, 200 seat space. How yeah. do you change gears as a director between those two spaces? Well, like I said, you know, the story happens in uh, the time and space of the theater you're in and the time of the theater. So a play will happen at 8 p.m. and a play will happen at 2.30. And those are two different things. You have to direct the play to suit both those time periods. It'll happen, it happens in the year 2014 versus 2012. So spaces are the same thing. Uh, you walk into one space and you might have 30 actors on that little postage stamp of the stage of the festival. I mean, it's not very big, mm -hmm. really. And then all the stairs go up. The actual performing space is very small, and the hot spots are really one or two hot spots, three hot spots. The rest is always keeping in motion. So you're also not just directing to the size of space, but the orientation of the audience. Because of the, the thrust, you have to it demands that you stay in movement, right? And I, and I often have like in Stratford thought, well, okay, it's a heart. Blood comes in, blood goes around the ventricles and articles and ventricles and goes shooting out the other direction. But it's blood and the actors are blood moving in that space in time. Uh, they might stop for a moment and do a big speech. They might not. They might keep moving and, uh, and take off. And that it, you, you're really dealing with a, a, a sculpture but also moving space. That's true to Tom Patterson, which is a big, long runway. You need to keep moving until you land dead center. You might stop for a while, but you've got to keep, you have to keep, give a metaphor to the motion because you're crossing vast spaces. Um, uh, um, here at the Tarragon, you know, you can do in the round, you can do, we're just trying to do a thrust coming up now. Um, and then, but uh, primarily you're in a pros, but you're in a more intimate space. You can do more because you don't have to project your voice. So the voice becomes, there's greater variation in the voice. You know, we did a play here and we moved it to a big theater and, uh, and I went, gee, it's a beautiful play here. And in the theater, they just were, they weren't barking, but it felt like they were barking. Mm -hmm. They were just, they had to push to reach to the back row. And I went, oh, there's something been lost here. The, 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 this theater's too big for the, the play. Um, and whereas it was sort of, the actors were allowed to be a little more emotionally dimensional. At the same time, you know, you, like the audience orientation at Stratford, the actors standing center stage can do a lot, but very little. Because even though the audience feels far away, they're not far away because they're just at the door. And you've got something. And let me ask you a point, just a point of curiosity about everything you've been talking about mm -hmm. in terms of the audience imagination creating it rather than yeah. you telling or dictating it a certain way. So here you are in the, in the tarragon, it's a black box, you know, you don't use much sets, you know, use the indicators. And the festival theater, which is a highly structured, it's a, make it's a life of Elizabeth, it is a set. It is a set. In terms of stairs, yeah. balconies, mm -hmm. all the rest of it. Right. Is that space as open to the imaginative process of an audience, given all the set that's there before you do anything, as a black box? There, uh, 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 yes, I'm sure it is. I, I can't say that it isn't, and, and they have built in flexibilities in that. that but that picture that they define is um, that that's defined by that set piece of uh, the, the roof and the balcony and the right. and the pillar and the pillars and the, the inner stage that kind of stuff. It is very f you have a sense of a particular place, a house, a castle, some kind of exterior. I always find it hard to get a sense of exterior, right. uh, and so you really you know at that point you have to really employ lighting as to create other worlds um, in terms of getting outside. Although it can feel like outside the house, mm -hmm. it's hard to get in the forest with that one. That's a hard one to get in the forest, to be in the forest. Uh, but again, lighting in a certain way, taking the light off the house, the, st the structure behind it is, is uh, such a picture mm -hmm. that it's, it's more difficult. So what you need to do is pull off the picture and play the, the, the people in front of it. Again, it's like what they're doing in front of it. 
that it changes what that picture is. But you're really operating with a very much a set piece. You don't get that at Tom Patterson because the back wall of Tom Patterson is the floor. Right. It's not the back wall. It's the floor down here when the actors are there and you're looking down on the floor. So you have a lot more mm, sense of um, picture yeah. that can change through gesture, through lighting, through uh, whatever, set pieces, furniture, uh, because you never actually have a back wall. But there's a very preeminent back wall in the festival theater. And where would you put yourself in the debate about the festival theater, whether that Elizabethan faux form of that house should be kept or whether that should be, which is a, a nod to mm -hmm. right, yeah. the globe, yeah. or whether that should actually be taken out of the festival theater and it should be a, a neutral space in there in which designers and directors go and create. Uh, there's a sonic problem I, uh, that when they take away that, the voice gets a bit sense, is sent up a bit too much because the wall's not pushing out. Uh, right. And I have done it when people you know, pulled the balcony out and uh, had a kind of more open deck feel there and um, in a sense to get a little bit more of a pros or pictorial image but it's a bit tricky because the voice gets lost because it doesn't have that back wall to bounce off of that's a functional thing yeah. what about the palette for the director and designer mm, I think you know like uh, having done so much environmental you have to embrace the environment you're working in and that's a defined environment I don't think I would necessarily I have changed it <laughs> I've asked for it to be changed, um, but I don't uh, think that you want to be able to employ it because it's, you know, when you do Tenara, you're stuck with a certain kind of house that you're having to moving in. When you're stuck in the Tarragon with a certain kind of environment that you're moving in, right? So you have to take each space and approach it environmentally. Um, and so part of the environment, uh, you know, that I guess is maybe a functional problem, but it's also critical if you can't hear the actors because their voices are being, right. um, you know, sucked off the back or whatever. And for a guy who came from um, environmental spaces mm -hmm. uh, in swimming pools, your yeah. early shows were in swimming pools and hockey rinks yeah. and yeah. houses. Uh, here you've been for 12 years in, uh, I don't know, the former milk factory or whatever this was. North Cribbage Board whatever. factory. Are you getting a little restless in this space? Yeah. Does the young I'm Richard restless. go? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So, so I try and keep reinventing it. So next show we're doing is uh, a thrust. Uh, I'd like to do some more environmental work. Someone was talking about a piece they wanted to do. And I went, oh, let's try and, you know, let's go outside, outside the theater. Sometimes the environment, environmental theater rules what you want to say because you're stuck with that environment and you can't go any past that environment. Whereas when you go into this kind of relationship, you can go and reinvent and reinvent and have a bit more of a tabula rasa to reinvent right. upon. We do a play on the train tracks here. We're on the train tracks, whether you like it or not, with the Mono Lino building and the parking lot here in front of us, and that's what the audience is going to see. So if I'm doing a period play on that in that circumstance, why am I doing that? Why am I using the environment as a design? So you have to use environment design, and that's a bit maybe what the festival is, what we're talking about, right. is that you have to use that environment as a design. That is what you're operating on. It's very good for Shakespeare, because right. there's kind of a, operates off that kind of principle, because... But, you know, it um, doesn't mean it's limited. It, no, I've heard the idea, and I sort of slightly subscribe yeah. to it. That when I go to environmental theater as an audience, whether it's mm -hmm. in a park or the yeah. railway tracks or whatever, I'm actually more myself as a person. I actually am fully Robert watching the show. When I come to the Tarragon or a stage or whatever, I'm less myself because I have to sit here, I have to face this way, and I have to be seated. And I'm actually less of who I am. Yeah. And some people are saying, well, let's go back to the outdoor, these different mm -hmm. places, because mm -hmm. you're giving more independence yeah. to the mm -hmm. audience. I think it has a lot to do with lighting. Because when you go into an environment, it's not often that you get a kind of darkness that you get when you go into this kind of space here. Right. Um, and that you are in the dark. And... Uh, one of the things that troubles me about that in this space is that, you know, sometimes we're doing pieces and they have to communicate to an audience or to look the audience in the eye and we can't get there because we're in the dark, right? That's also a problem I felt at Stratford. It's less so at the Patterson because everybody can kind of see everybody else, so the actor can kind of see the audience better. But on the festival stage, you've got the lights in your eyes and it's, it becomes more difficult to see the audience, right? And... Uh, and here, it's very difficult to see the audience. Uh, 
uh, with the lights in your eyes, so you lose that kind of connection. If you just turn the lights on, then it's that's mm -hmm. just a different kind of environment, right? Uh, and I think we have it. when we did the valley here. I really put the audience on both different sides, and you could, you know, we lit in the center. It was primarily in the center, but it was kind of everybody was seeing everybody else. There was a community uh, versus suddenly the lights go out and you're in the dark, and that is an odd feeling because you're in the dark with all these strangers <laughs> and you don't know the person beside you necessarily. I mean, you, you don't know them, right? You might, you, but then another the person inside you might not know, you know? Uh, and even then, if you do know them, when you go dark, you're like, what are we doing in a dark room together, right? That's, that's weird. <laughs> that's perverse. 